Hello, I'm Atuba George and I'm so blessed to be bringing God's truth to you. Let's pray. Father, we bless you today. You are good. Your mercies endures forever. We love you so much with all our hearts. And that's why we keep your word. You have first loved us to bring us your word. That's your demonstration of love to us. And by that, you have called us gods. Thank you. We bring all the glory and honor to you. And I declare today, burdens are being lifted, yokes are being destroyed as your word is coming forth. Everyone at the sound of my voice is being blessed right now. Thank you. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Amen. Praise God. Now then, we are in 1st John chapter 2. We're in verse 6 now. No, we're just going to continue and see how the Lord will help us. He who says he abides in him ought himself also to walk just as he walked. If you say you abide in him, in the Lord Jesus Christ. If you say you abide in Christ, it's not by confession. Your lifestyle, your daily walk should show that you abide in Him. Now that's how others will know that there is something that you trust in. And that thing is Christ. So it's not a confession to say, see, don't mind me, I'm a Christian, you know. but I don't mind all these things I do. You're lying. That's what He told us in the previous one. He said, you're lying. You're lying. You don't give excuse for your Christian life. Don't. If he says walk in it, walk in it. So he says, he who says I abide in him ought himself also to walk just as he walked. Brethren, verse 7 now, I write no new commandment to you, but an old commandment which you have heard, had from the beginning. The old commandment is the word which you heard from the beginning. Again, a new commandment I write to you, which thing is true in him and in you? Because the darkness is passing away and the true light is already shining. Hallelujah. Yes, the true light is already shining in your life. Even as the darkness is passing away. Glory to God. Receive that word and declare it. Just declare it with me. Say the true light is already shining in my life. Say it again, the true light is already shining in my life. And the darkness is passing away, glory. Now, now, can we declare the same thing concerning our nation? Say, in the month of May, the true light is shining in Nigeria. And the darkness is passing away. Hallelujah. And yes, the darkness is passing away. It's gone. Hallelujah. It's gone. And the true light is shining. And then all of a sudden, we will not hear of banditry anymore. We will not hear of kidnapping anymore. No, not in the scale that is going on. We will not hear of attack, a village being attacked. No, 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 no. But men and women will begin to dwell in peace and focus on their destiny, focus on their future, bring forth the best that is in their land and bless the nation. Hallelujah. Yes, that's taking place in our nation. Someone is there looking at me and says, are you serious? Yes, I'm serious. I say, how do you know? Because I've heard from the Lord. Now that's what he's telling us here. Hallelujah. Listen, I'm too full of these truths. Verse 9, he who says he is in the light and hates his brother is in darkness until now. <laughs> you know, I love the way John writes. It doesn't mean words. He tells you straight as it is. He says, God says the true light is now shining. Yes. Then he says, he who says he is in the light. Okay. Meaning, he who says he's born again, because to be in the light means to receive Christ, to be born again, because Jesus is the light. When we receive him into our hearts, we become the light. Yeah. Now he says, if you say you are in the light and you hate your brother, see, he says you are in darkness till now. You're not saved. 
you can still accommodate hate in your hatred in your heart. You are not saved. That's what John is saying. We are not saved. You're not a baby Christian child. You know, sometimes like, you know, uh, he's still a baby. He will learn this thing. No! John says you are still in darkness till now. What the truth is about. So what do you do? Repent. Repent. The fact that you can still accommodate hate in your heart means you have not fully received the love of God. That's what it means. We'll see this later. Because just know this. If you can still accommodate hatred in you, it doesn't matter who. It doesn't matter what anyone has done to you. The moment you receive Christ, that is the true light that shines in your life. And that light, I'll tell you what that light does. It makes you see everything clearly. So you will even look at the hurts that people have hurt you in the past and you realize that, oh, thank God they did that to me. Because if they hadn't, I wouldn't have been here. That, that's what happened to Joseph. He, you know, he, he could have been the one carrying the most uh, uh, revengeful thoughts in his heart, especially when he saw his brothers. But because the true light was shining in him, he saw things through the true light. So he said, hey guys, don't be afraid. You meant this thing for evil, but God meant it for good so that he will bring me here ahead of you to save lives. That's how he saw himself. That that's what the true light does. So if at that point you still find in your heart hatred, it simply means you are still in darkness. The light have not shone on you yet. That's what it simply means. He who loves his brother abides in the light. And there is no cause of stumbling in him. I love this. <laughs> we love one another, not because we are perfect. We love one another because we have received perfect love from him. And let me tell you this truth. When the love of God is inside of you, nothing can hurt you. That's what we know. So why should you be afraid for love, for, from loving? I don't even understand what I'm saying. The reason people don't love is because they walk in fear. Now, when you receive that perfect love in your heart, there is no fear in your heart. But he who hates his brother is in darkness and walks in darkness and does not know where he's going because the darkness has blinded his eyes. Wonderful. You see, have no business with darkness. Have no fellowship with darkness. Why do people steal? It's because they are afraid it's fear and why are they scared because they are in darkness it will take a measure of hatred in your heart for you to steal from someone you know that right yeah because 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 in your heart like why should he have more than me why should he be enjoying all these things and i'm suffering that's hatred it's envy combined with hatred and then you go steal from this person so you want to have you're in darkness and you're walking in darkness. Look at what it says. It says, he walks in darkness and does not know where he's going because the darkness has blinded his eyes. Thank you, Jesus. Verse 12 now. I write to you, little children, because your sins are forgiven you for his name's sake. I write to you, fathers, because you have known him who is from the beginning. He's talking about a different level of knowledge. Say, as children, you're excited because you're learning that your sins have been forgiven. That, that's the babyhood stage when you come into Christ. Your sins are forgiven. Wow. So no sin is holding me bound anymore. No, no sin. So I, I can do what I want to do. Yes, you can do what you want. So what do you want to do? I want to serve God with my life. Hallelujah. Because sin was a problem. I was scared that God would not accept me because of my sin. But now he's accepted me and he's telling me the sin is gone. So wow. So I, I can worship God freely. I can serve him freely. Yes. Can I go back to sin anymore? No, you're going back into bondage. You were delivered from sin that you may serve God freely. Not to wake up and say, so now I can sin freely. Sin is a bondage. It binds people. So when you find yourself going back to it, it means you are bound by it. And that's what you need, freedom from it. And Jesus is the one who set you free already. Oh, she brain, they can 
I write to you young men because you have overcome the wicked one. Then he goes again, I write to you children because you have known the father. I write to you fathers because you have known him who is from the beginning. See, fathers have experience with him. I write unto you young men because you are strong and the word of God abides in you and you have overcome the wicked one. How did they overcome the wicked one? The word of God in their mouth. That's why the Bible says they overcame him by the blood of Lamb and by the word of his test or their testimony. Now what is the word of their testimony? It, they, when they confess what God has said to them, they are testifying that God speaks and that God dwells in them. That's the testimony that we overcome Satan. With. Now look at the next verse. Verse 15. Do not love the world or the things in the world. If anyone loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. Simple. You are so in love with the world. You want to do things like the world. You want to, you know, sometimes you find believers competing with the world. <laughs> Why are you competing with them? There are no basis of comparison. So how can you compete with them? You are a new creature. They are not new creatures. They are, you are, you are spirit being spirit soul and body they are living souls no spirit in them so how do you want to contend con compare yourself with them thank you jesus for all that is in the world the lust of the flesh the lust of the eyes and the pride of life is not of the father but is of the world see the lust of the flesh the lust of the eyes the pride of life he said, these things are of the world. That's all God deals with. God doesn't compare himself saying, I have a better car than you do. Or I live in a better house than you do. See, that's the pride of life. I have worked so hard. See the house I built. Hey, he says, those things are not with God. Because you may have worked hard for 30 years to build that house. And someone else will just receive the house as a gift. It's called grace. And he didn't work for it. See? <laughs> That's what God calls it grace. And this grace has been made available to all children of God. Hallelujah. Mm. Verse 17. And the world is passing away and the lost of it. But he who does the will of God abides forever. Do you want to abide forever? He's just told you the secret. Do the will of God. Find out what God wants you to do. Find out what, where God wants you to live. Find out what school God wants you to go. Find out where God wants you to walk. That's what it means by doing the will of God. So when you do the will of God, it doesn't matter the shaking that will take place. You will abide forever. Hallelujah. Oh, let's just continue. Verse 18 says, Little children, it is the last hour. And as you have heard that the Antichrist is coming, even now many Antichrists have come, by which we know that it is the last hour. So John, or oh, even then, was speaking of the arrival of the Antichrist. Now, which Antichrist is talking about? I say many Antichrists in the world already. Many. Well, who is the Antichrist? Any voice that opposes the ministry of Jesus Christ is, the, is walking by the spirit of the Antichrist. They can be so subtle. They can be so subtle. Now, if you don't understand the workings of the Spirit of God, you will be swept away following the Antichrist without knowing. I remember one time God spoke to me and said, Hey, do you know anyone who is speaking against Titan is walking by the Spirit of the Antichrist? Like, whoa, like, Lord, this is heavy. He said, yes, because Jesus is the high priest after the order of Melchizedek. And the two things Melchizedek did, according to scriptures, he blessed Abraham and he received tithe from him. See? So when they say, don't pay tithe today, they are saying, don't allow Jesus to function in his today's ministry. In receiving the tithe from you so what is that what do you call that person such a person is opposing Christ such a person is speaking by the spirit of the Antichrist so be warned and be careful praise God our time is up today what a way to end and <laughs> praise God we're gonna to continue tomorrow the Lord bless you today in Jesus name 
Amen.